Considering the dangerous task performed by the predecessors, it is a pity that such people were hated and the effects of ignorance. That was long. Long ago, before the time which science came to the world, there were people who were vile and unclean. These people called themselves Zealands, and they worshipped their own emotions, and therefore tried to make themselves as gods. Then came a man named Caelan, who thought such behaviour was false and an affront to nature. Caelan preached to people that they should set themselves above natural forces who are eternal, and more powerful than man. In time, people began to see the wisdom of Caelan's words and followed his teachings. These people called themselves pagans, and they turned aside from the worship of emotions. In time, those who followed the old worship of emotions, those who were called Zealands, began to hate the pagans. For the pagans, the practitioners of the one true church, began to grow strong in their numbers. The Zealands feared that the pagans would overwhelm them. They did, then did the Zealands persecute the pagans. They persecuted the pagans, continued to spread the word of the power of the natural forces and the divinity therein. Because of the danger of being killed or enslaved by Zealands, the pagans were driven out of the cities and fell into the wilderness. Caelan then took his followers up to the peak of the great mountain Morgalen. There they built a great altar where he could worship the force of nature in peace. The construction of the altar took a very long time, for it was built from a sacred black stone that is very rare. Not long after the altar was built, the Zealands attacked the pagans so that the true religion would be driven out of the world. However, the natural divinity saw that their children were being assailed and were saddened. In the ensuing battle, the Zealand soldiers drove the pagans before them and seemed, uh, to, the peace, seemed to the peaceful to be unstoppable. In one great act of blasphemy, the Zealands destroyed the holy altar which the pagans had built. In one great blast of foul magic, the altar was shattered. Its many pieces were scattered about the mountaintop. Seeing such blasphemy, the natural divinities came down from the heavens and destroyed the Zealand army. After the battle, the natural divinities saw what had been a place of holy worship and had been defiled by zeal and hatred. Therefore, the natural div divinities destroyed the top of the mountain and exposed a seething volcano. When the natural divinities saw that Caelan had been killed, and that pagans had no leader, they decided to li liven up the world. The divinities then manifested themselves as the titans of the elements and procured out of their, poured out of their wrath upon the Zealands. When the pagans lost their way and did not give proper thanks and worship to the titans, they too received the titans' wrath. Nice send his best I'm sure he does. Another one of them things there. This can only end badly. Try that again. Why won't it go further that way? Okay, so you bounced off the fucking void instead. Must be a way to get there. Come on, you were on it. It's not going to work. Be away across somehow.
Hello. That's your name. You may ask indeed, stranger. I am Mithran, but what name do you go by, young one? I'm called Slugnor. Greet Slugnor, and how may I assist you? I have many questions. Ah, good. It's always important to ask questions. That way, one will never run out of things to learn. I can't refuse one has traversed ghoul filled passages to meet with my hospitality. What are some of these questions? Tell me about Pagan. Your question is quite broad in scope. Do you wish to talk about the city, the island, or all of Pagan? Are they not all the same? Indeed, no. Although many people use, or should I say misuse, the word Pagan to mean the world, the island, for a few uh, ethnos ethnocentrics, the city. In actuality, Pagan is only the name of the world. The city. Ah, Tenebrae, the city was not settled until near the end of the war between the Pagans and the Zealands, after the Titans defeated the Destroyer. Most of the world lay in such ruin and disarray that few people who were left on this island congregated into a single community. They called their city Tenebrae, meaning City of the Eternal Twilight. First, the Necromancers held rulership, but once Caelan became Tempest as well, the people elected to have their leaders come from that line. Who's Caelan? He was the first Tempest. An early hero to the people, his life as necromancer was filled with some amount of tragedy. When we have time, I will let the rest of the history of this world to you, then you'll have a better understanding. The island. The island is called Morgalin, some of the mountain or volcano from which it springs. As far as the people know, this is the only piece of land. Remaining after the Titans by Christ the Destroyer. All of Pagan. The lands of this world once spanned great distances. At that time, the people were prosperous and, for the most part, unified. However, when the words of warring came from mysterious being called the Guardian, the population split into two factions the Zealands, who believed in the ancient traditions, and Pagans, who felt that the Guardian's words meant the end of things that were. The two factions fell into fighting against each other, with very forces of the elements began to take form and grow. A malevolent entity called the Destroyer attempted to conquer the world. The elements, who had amassed titanic levels of power, rose to battle it. During the struggle, the lands were demolished, leaving only a few people scattered across a single island, this island. Shortly thereafter, the Zealands fell to their enemies, and the world became known as Pagan. Actually, I meant the people. <laughs> to be honest, I know a little about the people. A few come to visit me for my knowledge, and even fewer to buy my scrolls. I do know a little about the mages of Pagan. Is them you're interested in knowing? Tell me of the mages. There are four of what I call schools of magic in Pagan. One for each of the titans. The study of death and ground is called necromancy. It is the necromancer who is responsible for carrying out the pact with Lithos by burying the dead and sending their spirits to him. The current necromancer, Luthien, is very old. I expect she soon will be passing her role to an apprentice. Vividos should be able to handle the responsibility quite well. Tempestry's main focus is water, though its aspect does involve combining with Hydro's sister Titan Stratos, making storms as much a part of Tempestry as the sea. Unlike the other schools, Tempestry is not learned, it is passed on through the bloodlines. The eldest living Tempest possesses the greatest amount of power, however, as long as the younger Tempest spell does not contradict the elders, the younger's magic will work fully. Since there seems to be little cap on the powers of Tempestry, it's true tragedy that Mordia rules the city, but for the sake of the people, that her reign is not a long one. Silas was the first follower of Stratos. His order of enlightenment teaches Thurgy, study of the winds. He's a good and learned man. You will permit you to indulge the judgment of ethics, who freely uses his powers of healing. Fourth school, sorcery involves a titan of fire. I've never spoken to Malkir in person, but I feel the sorcerer's reputation for deceit is unchanged by his rise to power. Take care when dealing with those who consort with Pyros, who seems they become as wicked as he. Those are the majors of the four schools. Of course, they do not represent all aspects of magic on Pagan. But other magic exists. There's what I call Thaumaturgy. It's not tied to any of the titans, but borrows bits and pieces from any form of magic you can imagine. I am a practitioner of Thaumaturgy. Can you teach me thaumaturgy? Not ready yet, my friend. Perhaps with a little more time and just this world, you'll be prepared. You sell scrolls? I do. Do you wish to purchase some? Yes. 
There's only one spell which I have bothered to transcribe into scrolls. This spell enables the caster to dispel magics that seal entryways and portals. Like other spells, you do not need to learn this spell before casting it. However, the magics on the scroll will disappear after you read it. So you can use each spell of opening once. You wish to buy the scroll of dispelling magic portals? Yes. Since the ink and parchment do have a cost to them, as well as the time it takes to transcribe the magical words, I must ask you for 50 coins. I will pay that. Enough about Pagan. What do you do? That's an interesting question. I do many things. I suppose I spend most of my time studying and exploring the mind. I do not believe that thoughts should be confined within the skull, so I study a little bit of everything. What do you study? To tell you it would take nearly as much time as I've spent collecting the information. Suffice it to say that I try to learn as much about everything as I can. Of course, my preference is to study magic. Perhaps in the future I'll have time to show you. Okay. How can I leave Pagan? I've never had anyone ask such a question, Slegnard. Do you truly wish a means off this world, or are you simply testing the limits of my knowledge? That's because finding the answer would be extremely tedious, and do not plan to toil for no reason. I plan to leave Pagan. That is indeed a tremendous task you are planning to undertake. I myself have given considerable thought to finding ways to cross into what you would call other worlds. I've not yet uncovered a solution. I have come to the conclusion that it is the power of the Titans that makes such travel impossible, even for one of my command of the Arcane. Therefore, it is reasonable to assume that to depart from Pagan, one must master the powers of all four of the Titans. I suppose the best place to begin is with one of the schools of magic. Have you spoken with the necromancers? No, I have not. Especially begin with them. Speak with Vividos about becoming an apprentice once Lothian has passed on her powers to him. I realise the thought of dealing with the rituals of death may seem disgraceful. I expect it's something to which you must have come accustomed to if you wish to succeed. Where are the necromancers? They reside in the cemetery. I believe you will take the east road from the sea. Says you go with care, for many of the walking dead also reside in the graveyard. Goodbye. Me farewell, stranger. It's land. If there's anything in my house that will aid you on your journeys, feel free to help yourself. Wait, before you go, my friend, I wish to give you two items that I believe will assist you in your travels. First is an item of recall I acquired many years ago. When you find yourself in trouble, you may use this item to teleport to my front door. Throughout the world, there are other discs to which you can also be transported, if you wish, providing you can visualise these places. How powerful this item is, I cannot say, for I do not know whether other stronger powers may prevent it from functioning at certain times. Furthermore, I wish to give you this potion of healing, which will magically aid the recovery of your wounds. I'll try to have others for you as you make return visits, but since the cost of me and time and energy is great, I will not have one for you every time you visit. Excellent. Use this well, here. Again, farewell. Well, aren't you a nice old chap? What the hell was that? Recall item? So. Hey, what are you up to? Right, I'm going to leave that key ring here because I don't think I need multiple key rings. But what I am going to do is I'm going to look up weapon values. Because I have no idea. So I've got a scimitar which does 5 to 16 damage, weighs 5 and does blade damage. I think. Scimitar, yes. But I've picked up Corgan's Fang, which does 7 to 13 damage. A little bit less at the top end. Weighs one, does blade and magic damage, adds plus four attack, dexterity, and plus one armor. Well, why the fuck are we not using that bad boy? Oh, yeah. Armor one. Nice. Well, let's just have a look at armor as well while we're here. So, uh, what am I wearing? Chain. Arm guards, regular armor. So chain coif, just two. I think I'm wearing a curiboli. Yes, that does two. Leather arm guards, I believe. I don't know. Are they a plate? 
think they're plate mail arm guards. Going by the colours, they do too. And then in leggings, and I don't have a shield. Okay. Wooden thorax. Sure, people hide things under pillows in this world. Nose across the side of that water. I think at some point I'm going to have to come back for that um, that thing. Okay. So I found one of these on the roof. Central Tenebrae. Good in. Kill me. It's a good start. The old, no, hang on. Who is that? I saw some purple roofs. Ooh, uh, I don't like look of you. You're a bit mean, aren't you? Is that the sweet song of lamentation I hear? Feed them all to the lurker. We. Sorry, I cannot talk to you now. I must attend to a leadership. I'm later at my house in East Tenebrae, over there at Bloodwatch. Who are you? May I ask your name? Certainly, I'm Salkind, and who might we be? I'm Slegnor, and what can I help you with today? Hmm? What do you do? What do I do? My, we are a nosy little thing, aren't we? Well, if you must know, I'm a Seneschal to Lady Mordia. What is a Seneschal? Who am I? Not too up on titles, are we? Yes, I am the Seneschal. It's my duty to take care of running the day-to-day -day affairs of the city so that our Tempest, the Lady Mordea, can concentrate on more important things. What is a Tempest? Surely you've heard of the Tempest? Oh, I see. You were just a visitor of the city, eh? Well, the Tempest is the handmaiden of the great titan of war, Hydros. Tell me about Lady Mordea. She's wise ruler and fierce leader, most worthy of the title Tempest. So many times people say that this thing or that thing cannot be done, and yet she does it. Do not have a lower crime than any of the previous Tempest? There is your proof. What are the important things? Well, if it would be common knowledge what the Tempest does, then there would be no mystery, no majestic mystique. Hmm? What are the Tempest duties? How is it we don't know about the Tempest? Are we a very busy person, perhaps a little simple-minded? Well, no matter. The Tempest has the ability to touch the portion of the power of Hydros. Who is Hydros? Ah, the great water titan, the Lurker. Whatever title she goes by is the most powerful of the Titans. Lady Mordia can use a bit of Hydra's power, control the weather, and things of water. Tell me about the title Tempest. My, 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 we really are a bit simple, aren't we? Perhaps we've been drinking a bit too much of Orlok's ale, or just to humour you, or refresh your memory. The title of Tempest is given to the leader of the city of Tenebrae. To become the Tempest, one must have been born of royal family. It is only through hereditary one may sit upon this throne. Why is Tempestry hereditary? Because the powers are necessary to bear the title are only transferred from parent to child. Lady Mordia received the power from her father. Does this make things a little clearer for you? Who was Lady Mordia's father? Didn't you learn anything as a child? Lord Keldon was Lady Mordia's father. And I might add that Lady Mordia is twice the Tempest that Lord Keldon ever was. Why, if it weren't for his wife's encouragement, he would never have admitted his powers and assumed the title of Tempest. And there would be. Bye. I want to talk to her, but she might kill me. Greetings! More work for less pay. Are you speaking to me? Yes, I am. Who told you to dare address the Tempest? I'm Slegnor. I know not your name, nor your face. I think you're not from Tenebrae. Where are you from? I am from far away. Don't toy with me, rogue. I'll don't tolerate such rudeness. Be gone from my sight. Greetings, your ladyship. Oh, no. Tis you again. May I speak with you? 
Not familiar with your name or your face. I am from Earth. Earth? What sort of nonsense is this? A place called Earth? No such place that name. You're nothing more than a simple minded fool. Be gone. Oh no, it is you again. I'm going to speak with you. I am from Britannia. Never heard of such a place. You're either a liar or a fool. Not smart enough to be a liar, not tolerate a fool. So I have to tell her I'm from Tenebrae. I'm from Tenebrae. You're a liar. I know all my subjects and they know me. I'll not tolerate such impudence. Well. Do not touch that. Well, because he's got a key under it. So I bloody well will. What are you going to do about it? But that's for this door. Ha! <laughs> Try and get me now. Perfume. an actual save here. I want to overwrite my quick save. Don't have to. And that's kind of the backwards way of doing it. But what I want to do is find that scroll. Dispelling magic poles. Nothing found. This scroll has been constructed to unravel the count magics used to seal all types of portals, including doors and sealed walls. Do not store in damp areas. But that's a locked door. Sure, it doesn't. I think you might be a liar. Okay, so he said that the cemetery was in East, that was East Tenebrae, and I think this is North. Is there a gate here? Yes.